First, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to participate in this program, broadcasting from the United Nations Plaza, addressing the intersection of science, spirituality, and the climate. My talk is titled, A Buddhist Perspective of Ecology and Real Change for Better. Today, if we analyze, we see parallel relationships between population growth, environmental crisis, and uh, commercialization. According to a detailed study on historical population growth published in JSTOR, at the beginning of this first century CE, there were only about 250 million people in the world. Today, we have 7.8 billion people. That's about 31 times more. From the mid 18th century to now, we increased almost 11 times. And in the last just half a century, it has almost doubled. Clearly, such a sudden population growth has compounded our impact on our global ecology and accelerated the climate crisis. Yet caring for the earth is a timeless concern. The Buddha taught roughly 600 years before the common era, the world population would have been relatively small, and one can assume that human impact wasn't as, as bad. Nevertheless, he clearly taught about the importance of not disrupting nature. Specifically, he taught not to disrupt any established habitat, ne never to relieve oneself near a river, and he particularly instructed his monks not to disturb trees. But beyond these specific injunctions, key Buddhist teachings concerning love, respect, and no harm stem from the Buddhist view of interdependence. Today we are exploring the interdependence of earth and beings, but first let's take a broader view of this vital Buddhist concept, the interdependence. It can be understood in two ways, dependent origination and dependent existence. The law of dependent origination teaches us that our experience depends on our earlier actions and conditions. It highlights the inner workings of our mind and body, our perceptions, feelings, cravings, and creation of karma, and our experience in life. It is not only about how our conscious mind and body came to be, but about our entire experience of the world. More broadly, if you want to reap something, you have to sow it first but it also requires the right conditions. To grow an apple tree, you need a seed, but you also need a right land, right amount of uh, the light, water, and nutrition. So depending on the conditions, this, it can <clears throat> give a, a little or a lot of fruits. So to extend that analogy, even if the seed is already sown, with the right understanding and the right effort, we can change things. That's why we're here today to understand how to mitigate our climate crisis by changing conditions of human attitudes toward it. The second concept of interdependence is the dependent existence. This is the ecosystem in Buddhist language. Each and every one of us depends on others for our existence. You are who you are today because your parents, your friends, your teachers, your doctors, the time and place you were born and in which you live. The world is now more independent than ever before considering the health, education, and economy system we have and the way we live, communicate, and travel. But in the name of improving these standards, we have forgotten our biggest dependency that we depend on this earth for our existence. We can no longer think that climate crisis is somewhere else problem. If you have a thorn in your foot, you don't say that it has nothing to do with your hand so you won't use your hand to plug it out. They both are part of your body and you use your hand to help your foot. In the same way, we cannot ignore the climate crisis even if it is more evident somewhere else and not in your own neighborhoods. We all are part of the same interdependent world. The dependent existence is one of the most important understanding when we talk about the environment issue. Let's examine what that means. We consider 
the universe in general and earth in particular to be formed by the elements, earth, water, fire, and air. The earth supports all of us. Water rejuvenates and supports our lives. Air refreshes our vital energy, the breath. And finally, the fire ripens all forms of life, give us the life force with us. We also see that our human body is composed of these same elements. Being made of the same elements, the outer world and our inner being are in a deep relationship affecting each other. But by exploiting the Earth's resources at the rate and scale we are witnessing, humans are negatively affecting the Earth's ecos ecosystem, and that comes back to affect us. The problem is we tend to believe that we can control life fully, and the Earth is an object to be consumed by us without worrying limits. That way of thinking has resulted in our great acceleration in human activity, which now we see as the beginning of the more obvious ecology problem. Our industrialized culture, agriculture, our population expansion, our dependence on fossil fuels, and our idea that the path to happiness lies in increased consumption and materialism has led us to this point. We see the results everywhere. Smoke cover cities cause thousands of deaths. Refrigerant chemicals eat away at the protective ozone layer. Acid rain poisons our waterways, and carbon emissions cause a change in the global climate. Climate change has brought great heat waves, floods, landslides that has killed thousands of people every year. And increased soil erosion, desertification, and water shortages, which has led to lower grain yields. The use of com commercial fertilizer and genetically modified seeds also have degraded the quality of soils and crops. As power grabs take place and resources become scarce, conflicts between communities and countries lead to war, famine, migration, and other ripple effects. So the causes, as we can see, are twofold. The greed of big corporations and individuals' disproportionate sense of self as freestanding versus understanding that we all are interconnected. Yet these two causes are also interconnected. For the real change to occur, we need not only to look outwardly at our actions as a society, but inwardly to our understanding of ourselves in relationship to the world. Then yes, there are a need for systemic change, reducing dependence on fossil fuels, farming more in concern with nature, diminishing the push for consumption. That will come with uh, change of legislations and demand from the population. But that demand will arise when people really understand and feel the consequences of their actions. Change will occur when people feel our interconnection with each other and with the world around us. Change will occur when they understand that even a small action they take affects someone else on the other side of the globe and vice versa. Buddhists seek to become enlightened by following the Noble Eightfold Path. Venerable Bhikkhu Bodhi interestingly used this as framework for change. He said, and I quote, right thought is clearly understanding the dan dangers of escalating carbon emissions and recognizing that human activity and human policies are responsible for climate change, unquote. He also said, um, that right action and right uh, effort together can break the groups of cooperation. I will also say that today we face uh, new realities that our ancestors didn't, starting with how many more of us are, as there are, all pushing to consume Earth's limited resources. This is the only planet we can live on, and we all should be concerned about well-being take responsibility before it's too late. Finally, I would like to say, 
Start with yourself. Certainly raise awareness of the climate crisis wherever it's possible, but also make sure that your actions and intentions are directed towards increasing your sense of connection with the environment and with the people around you. Because in reality, the very happiness that we all want has to come from a more compassionate place. We have to go beyond our immediate self-interest. We can do that by simply learning to extend our focus and interest to greater number of people through compassion, kindness, and sense of care. This should come from the understanding that we all are connected, standing on the same earth, breathing the same, uh, breathing in the same atmosphere, affecting the, and being affected by the same earth environment. When you have positive attitude as such, rooted in compassion, guided by uh, knowledge and courage, you have great pot potential to bring a positive influence to the environmental ecology. Your efforts itself will be more sustainable, and it will make this earth a much nicer place to live now, and it will ensure that it will remain a good home for the future generations. Thank you.